Hi and welcome to another video in the RHCSA video series. Today's video is on create simple shell scripts. Um, so as, as you guys may be, may be aware they've added um, some additional um, objectives into the exam. One of them is around shell scripts so it kind of was implied before that you may have to run, you do have to run uh, shell scripts but um, as we've found now they've kind of actually given out um, a bit more detail about what they're looking for uh, with regards to shell scripting and so then I'll just cover it in this um, sh uh, fairly short video. So there's um, a few things to cover so firstly what a shell script are, what the com common uses, it, uses it are and just basically how to create the different types of scripts um, they're looking for and all the different options around it. So as always let's launch terminal. So the first thing I would say is to have something like VIM um, because VIM will have it has quite nice um, uh, syntax highlighting so at least you know you're on the right um, right place. Um, otherwise you can use nano or whatever if you want to. Obviously if you're not on if you're not in the exam, you can use your own uh, text editor. So I use something like Notepad++, um, and that's got really nice syntax highlighting, and it's in Windows, so you can create it in there, and then you can just copy and paste it into your uh, Linux server or transfer or whatever you need. So uh, let's create first the the basis of a script. So let's just do vim and just call it um, my first script dot sh so it's always dot sh um, it can be pretty much any uh, command extension but uh, I would recommend to keep it as dot sh so people know it's a, a shell script but you, you might also see dot bash but yeah it's shell just means uh, sh so we'll create like that um, I for insert and you've got to insert the first line which is the common line so you have this okay so all this line does is tells it what is going to you what what um, what's going to be used to execute these files so as you know when you log in when you log into a terminal or whatever it launches uh, either shell or bash uh, but a uh, shell is you know the the older command line interface we have and bash which is born again shell is just basically a new iteration of that or newer iteration of that there's also some other ones like corn shell etc but this is the the most common ones is shell and um, bash so I generally use bash it's yeah, they most of the commands are uh, transfer between the two but, but obviously bash is a bit newer so I generally use that so that's you need to have and then the rest of it can be up to you whatever your script contains so we should just do a, we do the, the typical, um, let's do the hello world as always, and just do an exit. So all I'm doing is an echo, so the echo command just prints directly to the screen and it's just going to say hello world and then exit. So you can see all we're doing with the bin bash is we actually call in bin bash to then call echo and echo is going to just print this to the desk to into your prompt so if I just right quit and so first thing we'll notice is if we try and execute it I can't tab to that and you'll also notice it can't actually execute permission denied so if we're doing the ls on this we'll see that there's read write permissions and read but there's no uh, execute so we can quickly remedy that with a quick dot x which is pretty insecure so you're going to give any everyone access to execute this command so you might want to do like a say a seven five uh, four or something like that uh, let's just have a look what permissions it's given it uh, so we've got read write execute for my user 
uh, write and execute for the group, uh, read and execute, sorry, for my group, and just read for anyone else on the system. So we now should be able to run it. Here we can. And we just get an output of hello world, nothing particularly exciting there. So let's have this output into a file. So if we just do a VIM again, so we've got the echo. We can then redirect this to a file. So we could have, um, let's call it script log, uh, script.log. Let's call it my first script.log. So we have it in the log. So we right click this. You get no output now. But if we do a cat on my first script.log, we have the uh, the execution information in there. So you could have like a um, say if you're doing a making a backup script, which is probably the most common usage of this um, of SH scripts. You would actually have in there um, perhaps the log of the backup, so you can have it redirect all the output, the general output into this. So you know it's I don't know it's backing up all the this particular directory. You can redirect all of that into a script into a log. And then have that um, right overwrite every single time. So with regards to that, we can actually do something around that. So if we just do a .sh again, so we've got my first script.log. So if you want to have it, if you want to have it to create uh, individual logs, we can actually use the date command. So date allows us to. Um, to grab the date from the actual system and we can use that to then create um, individual uh, individual files so we can do my first script dash and then we're going to do back tick which looks a bit like that you can see this is now highlighted in a different color because we're using a back tick so it means that we must make sure we close the back tick so we go date so it's going to call the date command and then we do a plus, and then that's going to call the individual variables for the date command. So let's do let's do a, a good example to back up. So year, and then you, obviously you can look these things up uh, with a man page as always. Uh, date, and then we can do dash. Let's do hour. And then a minute dot log. Then we close the bracket. And obviously you can just verify this is going to work. So we can just right click this, run the command, and we just see what we get. So uh, 2020, 10, 16, and 23, 22. So it looks good to me. Um, so then we can run that script. And we can expect the file to have a different name. So we just do a cat my first script. If we do a double tab, we can now see it's got created an individual log file. So then we can have a log for every time it's been run. Okay. So that kind of covers the. Um, there's a section on essentially uh, processing output of shell commands within the script. So that's a very simple. Um, implementation of that so you process the output nicely to um, ensure that you you capture the output while you run the script because obviously mo most times you're going to run the scripts with cron uh, with cron jobs and you won't be there to attend to that script so you won't know if it's run or not or um, you won't you may know if it runs but you may not know if it's um, actually could complete successfully without looking at the log so that's why the logs have been written like that um, so the next thing really uh, we can do is start to process script inputs uh, so that's with the, the um, dollar sign so there's different dollar sign variables uh, that allows us to pull different inputs from the system and also conditionally executing code so it's conditions like um, if statements, so we can do if this equals x, if x equals one, do this. If x equals two, do that, and then else, 
then just do a same completely different maybe exit with a, an error code so we can do like ifs fors um, and stuff like that so let's do just as focus on if statements and we can use the test command as well so so let's create a, a very simple script to do a ping command so if anyone's not aware so a ping command literally just pings the system so I think ping dot yeah two dot five so that pings back and if we do dot six there shouldn't be anything there at the moment yep so we've got two uh, IP addresses we can try pinging okay so I want to write a simple script to then print out if the IP is reachable or not reachable it's a very simple one so to do that we just do a VIM let's just um, what we can do is just co copy my first script to and we create it as a name as uh, ping uh, let's call it ping automation dot sh so we vi m ping automation and we can just double d on that uh, command um, that on that line just delete it and we can just start creating a new one so we don't want to define what IP address we're going to ping in the command we actually want to pull it from somewhere else so what we can do is there are uh, variables based on the um, what you type in post the .sh uh, execution so you can write um, ping automation .sh and then space and then the IP address and then you could have another space and another variable and a space and another variable and another variable as you can see you can go on forever almost so you could you can accept those uh, variables by calling them in a particular way so the way to call them is actually using a pound si uh, dollar sign and then a nu numerical value so the first variable is one two three four and all the other variables you may get so let's do a ping minus c one so we're going to do one ping and then dollar sign one and then we're going to do if so if this happens then we're going to test the output so it's going to test the the condition of the ping command so when the ping command runs against that ping it's going to capture the the exit code so there's a obviously each um, application that runs has an exit code I think it's 0 to 255 is the values that it can exit with obviously most uh, uh, things and uh, exit with a 0 or 1 or even a 2 but it's mostly 0 or 1 so 0 being everything executed fine and 1 means that there's some other issue so what we're going to do is we're actually going to test to see what the exit code of the above command was. So this just tests what the last command was, what the exit code was, essentially. So let's just do that. And if this equals, so minus EQ equals 0, then... So the if statement, then we've got a test command, so that's going to test on this. Then you've got an equals, so if this test is equal to zero, we're then going to do something else. And what we're going to do is echo So we're going to echo the IP given in here is reachable. Else, if this fails, so we've got any other command, any other re uh, result, we're going to just do echo IP is not reachable. And then finally, to close off an if, you've gone uh, if backwards or fee. Uh, we don't need an exit. Oh, we just do an exit just in case. Okay. So if this test for the value for the uh, execution of that 
is equal to zero, then we're going to echo IP is reachable. Else, with any other output, so if it's not equal to zero, it comes up with one, two, three, or any of the other values it could potentially do, then we've got an IP is not reachable, because it could be any kind of error message. And so you've got to make sure you handle every eventuality, because you don't want uh, your your scripts to um, be able to handle certain eventualities and then essentially fail in, uh, in a, in a a catastrophic way so you want to be able to handle everything so you want to have things like else's to handle everything and exit in a nice graceful manner <clears throat> it could be just to write uh, something to the log to say you know it's failed that's all it could be or you can have an, an additional handler of some sort so let's just right quit this and let's see how it goes so the first thing I'll do is just run the ping automation and we've got IP is not reachable because we didn't give an IP. But we've also got, as you can see here, got some usage. So it's the ping command telling us what are you doing, basically. Uh, so let's give it some input. Because I didn't give any input, that's hence why it's confused. So we have IP is reachable, and we can see the ping output there. So it's done a single ping to that command. A one packet transmitted and IP is reachable. That's great. So let's give it an IP, it doesn't work. So it's going to try and ping. And we can see IP is not reachable. So one thing we could do is one thing I don't like there is the way that we've got no extra line uh, there. So what we can do is echo minus E minus E on both of these. We can send a, a carriage return. So it's a, a new line in here. And that will basically create a new line first before we actually have that. So the minus E allows us to use um, non-readable characters in this. So if we try this again, this one wasn't a problem really because it already had some space. But you can see there's an extra space there. So there's an extra line. So if we do that again now on the one that works, we can see now it's got an extra line there. It looks a bit, looks a bit better, a bit re easier to read. But yeah, that works quite nice. So we can see the IP is reachable and it's pulling out the command. So what happens if we provide two addresses? It's completely ignored because we don't have anything to handle the second uh, address in there. So we could potentially add something to handle that as well. Um, we could have, we could add another instance for that, or we could have, or we, yeah, we could have something that yeah, iterates through all the um, eventualities and, until it comes across a blank one. So yeah, you can do something around that. So that's just a very quick example of a for uh, if command uh, for IP, uh, just an IP pinging uh, command. That's all, nothing major there. Okay, so let's make another script. So again, we just cp my first script, and we'll make a uh, let's create a log handler dot sh. So in my example here, we have um, a load of logs that have been created, and they've all been created as dots log files and we actually want them as .txt files. It's just an example. It probably wouldn't happen in real life, but it's just uh, something I can come up with uh, relatively quickly. So what we want to do is iterate through all the file files of a particular type in a directory and then handle them um, to rename the files from the original name to dot, uh, .txt. Okay. So if we just do a ls minus l h t r a and then dot log oops maybe we need a star uh, so we've got a, a, f a couple of um dot log files so we've got f this three here so let's try and get them renamed using this script so handler.sh cool so again delete that line and go into insert oops i'm going to replace cool 
Right, next thing, um, let's create a simple for command. So for, so for is, uh, will iterate through, um, we can iterate through files, we can iterate through um, a number, we could have like for uh, zero to 10, go through that and do all these actions. So you can have it quite easily controlled how many times it runs, for example, or you could have it iterate through yeah, directory or yeah, can it, it can iterate through pretty much anything you can run commands on. It can actually have a, a set fi finish. So do for uh, let's do file. So this is just a variable name in dot So in this current directory and dot log do mv and then we want the variable file, so we're going to grab the file and we want squiggly brackets file close squiggly brackets, so it's just telling it to um, expand this variable to actually get the information so it needs to go and get that file name dot txt and then file oops file dot log whoops need to be very careful with your coding but good thing with VIM again we're getting um, it's sorting out all the all my um, shell scripts say all all um, is indented nicely so it's nice and readable and also you can see that uh, the, all the syntax highlighting is nicely done as well so it's really it's really worth doing in the exam it just helps helps make everything just that much easier okay let's see how this goes I'm not sure if I got this right I'll just make sure okay so what's happening here so uh, MV is, is running so it's run three times which is a good sign so it's picked up three files and I've got three files dot log However, I can see cannot stat. We can see dot log dot text. So it's no such file or directory. So something's gone wrong here. What have I done? So let's put in the full name. Move. Okay. Right. So we run the command, and we have. For file in current directory, okay. So it's added dot log on the end of them, <laughs> so that doesn't look very good. Uh, so I haven't quite handled it right. So what I need to do, oh, that's a nightmare. <laughs> so I need to clean up the files and then rename them to dot log. So it has moved them. Uh, so the command is correct, but what's happening is it's finding all instances of files with .log on the end, um, moving them, and then it's doing a move, so it's moving the da -da 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 .log to to um, .log. <laughs> so it's not really going to handle the files very well. So um, first thing to do is update this to what we wanted is dot text and now because and now I need to actually handle the files correctly so I need to actually remove the dot log off the file first um, so what we can do is um, something around sed perhaps um, so there's a an application called sed which does uh, string uh, manipulation dot log and then an end of line you shouldn't have to do this in the command in the uh, te exam, but it's just it just be good to uh, cover this anyway. It's quite a nice thing to have. So it's going to change the variable file to an echo of this. So it's going to echo that file, but when it echoes it, it's actually going to manipulate the file. So it's going to do an s. Uh, so search for log dot log and then the end of the line, 
or end of the yeah end of the line and then it's going to basically globally replace that with nothing so we have no string ending and then we're going to move the file that we match with to dot text so we actually need that to this should be file should be filed one so this is a good way to see what the variables are so did a bit of troubleshooting here so I've I've tried to do a said and I'm not sure what the output is so I'm gonna uh, just echo the two variables and just see what happens and what I'll do is I'll just comment out what's happening here so uh, so leave that there just uh, uh, comment it out so we can run this quite safely so I've created another couple of files to keep testing so I'm not getting any value for those so so file one out oh, and file two so that one be very good so that should be just file so let's have a look so we'll test one dot log and test dot log okay so we couldn't handle those but let's have a look so I look okay so I'm not getting anything for looks like file one so something's not quite right with this echo so the echoing I think we need to do and that needs to be expanded because it's it's horrible value and you've got to put it in brackets here in quotes and right quit this let's try that again ah yep the command is not completing okay so I need to put that in back ticks that would be why so now we try this again okay that looks a bit better right so what I forgot um, is to put back ticks on this so because I wanted to run the entire command separately and then put this into this, into this um, variable I need to actually put the whole command in back ticks to tell it to externally run this command so I wanted to echo um, the file so which is the value we've got by searching um, for log in this current directory and then I'm going to do some string manipulation manipulation which is to search for the ending of dot log and to replace it with nothing which is basically the forward slashes in here and then the G to globally replace and then so it basically does the echo and then this does the string manipulation and then it gets put in as file one so we've got echo file one and then we've got echo file so we should have first place we should have with no log and the second one should have with log if that's all correct quit so let's just run that again so we have no log log no log log so it looks good so that was good fun so let's now actually test the command so one more time modifying it we can leave the echoes in there they won't harm anything it just gives us a comfortability that we know what we're doing so it's going to move the file to dot text so the file one will be the one without the dot log on the end so that will be just file one dot text and this will be just file da -da -da dot log look at the current name so now we run this we've got no output apart from the uh, the test bits the echoes so let's uh, do an ls dot log uh, sorry star dot log we've got no such files in there and if we do a dot txt we have um, some old ones from previous uh, videos but we've got the two tests and there we could easily um, do that the inverse of this so we can just update this so if we do an r if we do an insert twice we've got a replace and if we just do a txt here and then and a log dot here and a txt here we can then move from the other way quite quickly and so it's going to move the kafka files as well no problem so obviously you've got to be careful with that sort of stuff 
uh, which I haven't been. Uh, so if we do a dot log now, we get all the files with dot log. And yeah, you can see it's quite nice little script to um, rename all the files with log. So that was pretty, pretty a bit more epic than I uh, expected. But yeah, it's quite, quite good, um, quite good thing to go through anyway. So that's four. So it four will iterate through, um, iterate through things. So we can have iterate through files. But there's other application. There's other ways to do this bit in a bit nicer way. So yeah, you can do lots of stuff like that. It's quite, quite nice uh, solution there. Um, the next one I would want to go through is while. Um, while will basically, um, it will again, it's, it's another iteration um, piece or a looping piece like the for command, um, but it also allows you, it also allows it to be more, a bit more open. So, uh, whereas for you got to define, uh, so a while is just um, until it becomes false. So it'll keep reading through something, or it'll keep executing something until the, the um, initial statement becomes false. So um, we could use that to read through a, a document um, and echo particular lines, or we could have it uh, read through. Um, it could be anything really. You could have it um, keep adding one every time it runs through. And so it could do it and a certain amount of times, and then eventually, when it reaches 10, then the statement is no longer true because it has to be lo lower than 10. For example, that's the initial statement. So let's do um, a while command. So if we, I think we've got a Kafka command. So if we have a look at the Kafka file, yep, that looks pretty big. Let's do a clear on that, and we'll just do a cp my first script again. And just do it Kafka uh, dot sh doesn't really matter Kafka dot sh so we create one specifically for that Kafka file okay so as always delete the line with double uh, double d okay so what do I want to do so I want to get the input file so we're going to create a variable called input and it's going to be equal to where the path is so um, I think that is home we can go with the full path um, and then it's Kafka dot txt was it dot log now <laughs> I think it's dot log Cisco dot log it doesn't match we know it's the other one <laughs> it's cool uh, you can see quite nicely it does it it boldens that to say that it's a valid variable which is quite nice and we've got a while, so it's the while command, which does the iteration, and ifs, so that's going to make sure that it um, handles new lines and stuff like that nicely. And then we're going to read minus r, and then line. So it's going to read all the lines in this input file. Let do. So what do we want to do? Let's just say echo. This is going to be pretty big output, but it's just an example, really. So we can echo the line. So this is just another variable that we create on the fly as part of the while command. And then we're going to say done. And with while, we need an input. So we're going to put the input in here. And the input's going to be the file itself. So that will be input. So while it reads through each line, it's going to do an echo of that line. And then when it's done, it, and it's going to be done once this input is finished, basically. So once the input is read through the whole file, it's then going to be finished. And if the input is just this Kafka file, so it's pretty, pretty simple. But as you can imagine, if you leave while loops open, they can run essentially forever. OK, let's give this Kafka script a run. So Kafka.sh, and it looks very much like the cat, but sh. So uh, so cat <laughs> Kafka dot log, and you've got exactly the same output. So yeah, it this command essentially does the same thing. Um, so it's just going to iterate through the entire script. 
So the final one I really want to do is a case. So um, a case is a bit like an if. So you have the um, different options, like an if. However, case is more for like we have multiple options that all can be valid. So rather than having lots and lots of ifs, if statements that are might be, they might have to be nested, so inside each other, you have a case where it just goes and iterates through each one. So I should kind of sh I'll show you what to do. Uh, regards that, just a simple um, a command that would do like a it would call a backup script for example, and the relevant backup script depending on the day of the week. So we'll do again a CP uh, my first script and we call it um, backup uh, type sh so as always vim backup type sh we delete the line we do an i and we'll write the command so um so we just do uh we'll create a value variable called uh let's call it now and we'll make it equal to dollar sign and then so this is pretty much the same so you know I do the back ticks in other parts of the command you can also use this dollar sign and brackets to expand it as in run it as a script so you can do either either or really um, but in this case we'll just do this so we're just doing a and brackets so the a value will give us an output of Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday but in a free character format so man chu when fur friday etc yeah so and then we're going to create a case statement so the case opens like this and then now in so now we're looking we're going to look in the now variable and we're going to look in that so in and we're going to match it against different values so today's uh today is actually a Friday, but it's now ticked over to Saturday. So we'll do. So we're going to create all the different options. So, man. So it's case sensitive. So you got to be very careful. So this is the option, like this. So it's going to match directly match man, and then we just do uh, what it's going to execute. So we can just do echo. In this case, full backup. And. And if we want to exit that, so we do that. And then we've got the next option. Uh, choose Wed. So we can have multiple options like this. So it's or Tuesday or Wednesday or let's do Thursday or Friday. Echo. Let's just say partial, partial backup. And then we've got, let's just do Saturday and Sunday. Echo, no backup. I don't think we need. I don't think we need those. It's a bit messy otherwise. And we'll just put that there. And all other options again. That's like a catch-all. Do nothing. And then finally, we just want a case closing, so we write case backwards <laughs> uh, to close that off. So let's see how we go with this. So Monday's highlighted for some reason, doesn't like something about that. Um, do I have, yeah, okay, so I should have two of those. So you'll see things wrong very quickly with this. Okay, so we've got the two comments there. So now in 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday. Looks good. I think I'm happy with that. Let's see how we go. And we've got no backup because the date plus percent sign A equals Saturday. So yeah, that works absolutely fine. Uh, so let's just say there's no backup essentially. Um, that's a very simple example of a case. But you can see where the power would be. Uh, so I've used it in scripts before where I have to handle multiple inputs and then you have different actions depending on that particular input. So for a final example to cover off um, the conditionally execute code, we also have the square bracket condition. So um, let's go back to my if statement example which was, I'm trying to remember now, uh, oh yeah, it was the ping command. So let's just go back, um, ping automation. So we've got an if and we've got a test. So we can actually use, this is how I normally use it, rather than the test command, we use it like this. So that basically does the same thing. It does it tests the condition for the if statement and then it will run if it matches. So we can just do a right quit and we can just run ping automation again. Um, so we've got the IP is not reachable uh, exit. So 10, 0, 2, I think it was like 5 was the working one. And we've got IP is reachable. So it works exactly the same. Uh, to be honest, for me, this is easier to remember. So I just use the square brackets, but you can use if test and then the query you want to actually test and run it like that. But that's totally up to you how you want to do it. Obviously you can do some sed like I did earlier to clean up uh, the output. So we could actually um, clean up the output with that ping command and make it look a bit more pretty. So we could, um, with that ping, we can have a sed on the end of here. Uh, at that point to you know remove the output so it only says the IP address or something like that or just the time base yeah much for much so just just want to show you the basics really and not go through too much much else um, yeah as I mentioned so once you've got a, a .sh script you can use that to automate screen things so for example that log um, file renaming so for renaming it from .txt to .log or whatever you could have that as a, uh, a script that runs every evening and then that would um, automatically rename the files or for example that backup script I ran just a, a second ago so this backup type you could have um, it actually also call up the backup so in here you could have another line that says um, execute um, backup so it could be, I don't know, home, C England, uh, the backup.sh command. So it ex executes the full backup, full backup.sh, and on, on the Thursday and Friday, it would execute the uh, partial backup. So that would be home, C England, part, backup.sh. And then you can also, as I mentioned earlier, you can redirect the outputs to a log file and we can do, you know, the date commands to have the additional dates, dating of the files and stuff like that. So you can uh, have it create a new file every time or you can have it um, append to an existing file. So if you want it to have a rolling log that you can review the bottom of each time, then you have to like, use it like this. Or if you want to create an, uh, an, an use an uh, create a new file every time or overwrite whatever's there then use the um, a single uh, line uh, symbol there um, also I've put in the uh, like a in the description below some quick um, quick sheets to do some uh, to learn commands for bash it just covers it some of them not all of them and um, some of these you might have to practice uh, offline so um, just someone saying someone else has created and I think it's pretty useful so I've, I've put the links in the description below as well thanks for viewing my video um, as always can you click uh, hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video 
hit subscribe if you haven't already um, hit the bell icon for notifications of when uh, I do release new videos um, as you've noticed already I've popped on the screen the usual um, stuff so I've got the Kofi page for any donations if you are kind enough to uh, donate to me that would be awesome um, also I've popped my T public page for any uh, merchandise if that's your something you're interested in and finally my discord server uh, euro information and you can use that um, to ask more detailed questions if you can't ask on uh, YouTube itself so you're more than welcome to check it out thank you